Hey and welcome, I'm your boy Solo. In this video, I'll be going over how to set up sliding text in OBS. Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. To get this here set up, we do need a plugin called OBS Text Slider. So I decided to make a video covering the install process just to make it a little easier. To get the plugin, all we're going to need to do is jump over to obsprojects.com. And from here, we're just going to navigate to the form section. In here, there's going to be a drop down for resources. And then we'll be able to click search in here. And we'll want to make sure that we search for obs-text-slideshow. If it's exactly like this, it'll be a lot easier to find. I will make sure to leave links to everything you need down in the description below so that you won't need to go through this here search process you'll be able to just click the link below. But from here, we're just going to find the OBS text slide show version 2.0.0 alpha and give it a click. This is just going to lead us to the spot where we can get to it. This isn't the spot to download it. We're just going to click on the plugins overview here and then we'll just navigate to the download. This is going to lead to a GitHub page. And from here, we're just going to scroll down. This is, should be on the latest release, the alpha 2.0.0 alpha and just scroll down. Now there's two things in here that we're going to need to download. You're going to need to download the Windows library zip and the windows local zip so make sure that you download both of these files as you're going to need them both in this year setup process after you click the download you can go over the installation process right here where it tells you to do exactly what i'm going to do but i'm going to go over the process step by step once you have them download it um, put them somewhere it's easy to find. I'm going to put them on my desktop and I'm going to extract all. I'm just going to extract it right here. It's going to open up the files internet. We're just going to give it a close for now. So this is going to be the local and we'll extract this one here as well. Perfect. And there we go. Now this isn't like a normal OBS plugin to install. You will have to drag these here files and you'll actually have to place these here things inside of the OBS folders for the plugin to work. To do the first one, we're going to start with the libraries. For this here, we're going to have to navigate to our file explorer and go to the C drive. In here, it's going to be pretty self-explanatory. We're just going to go to program files, double click, and down through the list, we're going to find OBS Studios. It should be very easy to find it. Once it's open from here, we're just going to go to the OBS plugins. In here, there's only going to be one folder to click on. We're just going to double click on the 64-bit. Now we're going to go over to the desktop where we have this here and open up our libraries. We're just going to copy paste the libraries into this folder. I already have it installed, so we're just going to replace the files in the destination and and continue. If you don't already have it added here, it's not going to give you anything. It's just going to ask you to continue because you are going to need permission to edit things in this here folder. So once you're done dragging those over, we're just going to give this one here a close. Now that's step one done. For step two, now we're going to need to add this here local file. This one here, if you're still in this here folder, we can just go back all the way to the OBS studios and start there. This will make it a lot easier instead of going back to the C file programs and then looking for OBS studios because they're both going to be put here. This one here is going to go in the data. So once you go to where you selected the OBS plugin, there should be data config bin. We want to go to the data this time. And then in here, we're going to go to the OBS plugin. Now, this is the tricky part that I run across. In here, you're going to have to right click and create a new folder. So you want to make sure that you create a new folder. You have to click continue. We need to name it OBS slideshow. I already do have it in here, but I want to make sure that I show this here for the example. You have to put it in OBS dash T text dash slideshow. Show. So you have to name this here folder like this and click enter. I already have a folder here named that. So it's just going to be the same one. It just moved down here. After that's created, we need to click here and we need to do the same thing. We just add a new folder, click it in here and we're going to have to click continue and name it local. You have to do this here for these as OBS doesn't have these here already built. So once you create a new folder and call it local, just open it up and it's the same thing. All we have to do is open up the local folder here and just drag these here things in here. I already have this done, so it'll just say replace them in the destination. But what you'll want to do is it'll be empty. Just click continue when it asks you for permission to add them. You have to have OBS closed to do this. And I have my OBS open currently running while I'm recording. So it won't let me edit the files in here. That's a little unfortunate. I never thought about that ahead of time. Next time I'll use a different rig. I'll know better. But th that's really it. From here, you'll want to just open OBS. And in OBS, if you've done everything correctly, you'll be able to click the plus down here in the sources and you'll be able to add a text slideshow GDI. If this here looks a little bit weird, you might have done one of the steps wrong. So make sure that you check, double check your steps and make sure that you put everything in the correct location. But all you'll have to do 
is add the GDI text. We're just going to name it this here just for now for the example. I suggest naming this whatever it is. Socials maybe. I'll, I'll name it socials. So anything at all will work. Whatever you're going to put in here. And you can read from a single file. So you can make a notepad on your front on your desktop or whatever. So you can make a document like that and just save it. You can click read from single file. You can find your file here by just browsing through. Go to your desktop wherever you made it. Depends on where you made it. Click open. And then you can click OK, and this will scroll through the text that you have in there. See, it'll, it goes to go. Now you'll be able to put anything you want in this here file. So you can go in here and edit it as well. Instead of like what I put in here, you can put uh, ZN Solo 101, Twitch, Twitter. So you could put your socials in here like that. Just click save. It'll instantly update and start going through them. When it goes through them the next time, it'll change them. So this is, I think, is a super cool thing to, to use and set up. I find it very useful, and it'll just keep going through whatever you put in here. So you can do a lot of stuff. You can you can add other things and edit it a little bit more as well when you go into the properties. There's other things in here you can do. Uh, you can have them slide mode is automatic. You can, you can use different transitions. Instead of fade, you can cut. You can swipe or slide. So then they'll slide in instead. And there's a few things in here you can select the fonts. Um, there's a little bit of outlining and grading and stuff that, that you can do to make it a little bit more uh, visually aesthetic. But that's something that I'm not really a professional on. I just kind of make it look visually pleasing on my stream the best I can. And I just go with it from there. But it's super easy to set up once you have it. And again, all you'll have to do is just make as many files as you want. And you can add as many of these as you want with a bunch of different animations. So then they can slide, they can fade. And all you'll need to do is just add your text file when you go to, when you use the read from single file. There's other ways to do it. And there's probably more examples over it. But I just wanted to make sure that I covered how to actually install this. Because I did find it. And someone suggested it to me. But when I went to install it and the folders weren't there. And I had to learn how to make them and stuff like that there. It was just something that I run into that I wanted to cover to make it a little bit easier. There's definitely lots of videos out there on how to use it. Like I said, I just wanted to cover how to install it. If anyone was having any issues installing it or getting started up, I hope this here got you set up and going. But that's it for this one here. If you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching.